thank you lord for this day thank you jesus for you thank you jesus for you have brought us here to listen to our word and to understand your word thank you lord for your unconditional love thank you jesus for you humbled yourself help us also to humble ourselves and to love others as you loved in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you joanna beautiful prayer amen praise god praise god thank you jesus so uh, i thought of continuing on pride and humility on what uh, sister dosto was teaching us on yesterday and uh, we were learning also on wednesday right wednesday it was yeah wednesday how do you were seeing on wednesday what you were studying on wednesday no one no one was there on wednesday praise god okay we were seeing pride and humility we were seeing how uh, david and saul david made mistake saul also made mistake both they made mistakes out of pride but david david repented whereas saul made excuses yes yeah praise god thank you jesus okay and we also saw how our spirit and our soul come into agreement that's when the body has no more power did we see that yeah on wednesday yes. praise god yes okay so um, we had seen what is pride what is humility what is humility god said that god focused god life yeah in other words christ centered christ dependent and christ focused okay now if you see uh, the world does not actually teach us what is real pride and what is real humility am i right what will the world say as humility kindness being kindness quiet kindness timidity but what does god say quiet yeah very quiet very nice very silent gold to timothy 17 enoch from amplified if you see the word the world has given us a wrong understanding of a person who's humble that's why they will say um, a humble person is a shy person very quiet very nice but that's not what the scripture says put compare compare okay see this for god did not give us a spirit of timidity and cowardice or fear a uh, abc saying spirit of timidity cowardice or craven and clinging and fawning fear so so this scripture is clearly saying here god has not given us a spirit of timidity timidity yeah so if we are timid if we are shy what is that what does that mean that means it is from the devil am i right because if god has not given us it is from the kingdom of darkness so this spirit of timidity this spirit of uh, shyness if you see many people will think i feel shy am i right i feel shy now we think it is a feeling it is an emotion but actually shyness is actually a spirit yes and this spirit is a evil spirit it is a demonic spirit okay now uh, if you see there are two Does anyone have a pen? Can you show on the screen? Okay, in our question, press card. Yeah, there are many who are showing. Now, uh, in our uh, keep it. Uh, yeah, like that. Keep. Now, if you see in a pen, there are two sides. Am I right? Yes. Yes. There are two sides of a of a pen. Pen. it's like a stick like a pen there will be two sides now uh, in the same way when it comes to pride pride is also like a stick and there are two manifestation to pride okay one manifestation of pride is what 
extremely arrogant and one manifestation of pride is extremely shy they are both pride that's why pride is expressed in both of these ways yes yeah that's why there are two manifestation it's expressed in two ways extremely arrogant and extremely shy now a humble if you see a humble person many of us think and many of people also think a uh, humble person is a person who is very shy a very quiet person but if you see shyness is pride that's why it's expressed in two ways and if you see uh, a humble person is not a shy person a humble person is bold enough to do what god has told him to do that's why many times you will say uh, i am supposed to be very quiet very shy that person is very quiet that person is very shy that means he is a very very uh, humble person but actually a humble person is a bold person a humble person is bold he has the guts to go and preach the gospel in other words humble person is saying no matter whether there is persecution no matter whether there is sickness no matter because if you see the life of paul saint paul you see he went through so many uh, persecution so many he, he you know he was beaten he was bleeding he was put in prison he experienced shipwreck and there were so many things that were happening in this in you know in his life if you see why but but was he ever full of pride no in midst of that try midst of that persecution he was humble and that's why he went uh, and 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 preached the gospel right yes was he ever shy to preach the gospel never no aren't we many a times ashamed of preaching the gospel shy yes yes but we see the scripture is saying we are not supposed to be shy but instead because this shyness is not a godly spirit the shyness is a evil spirit a spirit of pride and that's why who's a humble person a humble person is a person who's saying lord if you are telling me to go and heal the sick i will go and heal the sick if lord you are telling me go and raise the dead i will go and raise the dead whatever you have said lord in your word that is it no matter what are my physical circumstances crisis situation i'm only going to agree to your word that is a true humble person yes okay put james chapter 4 verse 6 you know put james 4 6 which we were seeing already we had seen this okay but he gives us more and more grace okay kichivi kichivi you know kichivi but he give it more grace wherefore he said god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble so we all know the scripture and we all know what is grace what is grace grace is God's willingness to use his power, his ability on his on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. Yeah, excellent. Now, if you see a uh, grace, we we saw on Wednesday that grace is given to the ones who don't deserve. So the people who are pride, they God has given them grace, but they don't receive grace because they are saying, "Lord, I did this. Lord, I did this, 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 this," and because of what I done. i qualify to receive without your grace because grace is god's ability on my behalf but when i'm in pride i'm saying i qualify by my own strength yes yeah now if you see to be humble okay to be humble is not a one day or a one night process you can't say that i went to the retreat okay i heard the word so i am humble can a person say that no to be humble is not only a one day or a one night process to be humble is a every 
day process where if you see in other words humility is renewing of the mind because when i'm in pride i'm saying I, my mind is not renewed instead my mindset is in a wrong mindset thinking that lord i did this that's why i qualify but the moment i understand that it is not of what i have done but it is of what christ has done now i am going to be humble because what is grace grace in other words is the finished works of jesus on the cross now how do we receive this grace we receive this grace by believing now when you say that the humble receive grace in other words the people who are humble will always believe in the word of god and what is belief what is belief what is the definition of belief in action corresponding you know it you know it yes action corresponding to the message that i receive action corresponding to the message now uh, I, i would always give this example if you are shopping in a shopping mall and someone comes and say fire 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 and you can smell smoke will you continue to go and do your shopping no no oh. Oh. you will leave everything you will leave everything and you will try to get out of the building as soon as possible yes yeah and when you're getting out why did you get out because your action yeah. corresponding to corresponded to that message which you heard yes 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 is yeah. god in the same way a humble person is the one who believes when i believe in the finished works of jesus on the cross now my actions are going to correspond press god now uh, we we saw an example on the uh, you know on that on wednesday there were two people saul and saul and david now if, if you say god brought his plan into fulfillment through david but not through saul why is that we saw this why why is it like that because david repented and saul didn't repent yeah if you yeah because saul was in pride then then if jesus would be then the plan if saul is the king the plan of saul is not come yeah now if you see uh if you see david's mistake looks bigger than saul's mistake but then god rejects saul and use david is because in the, the the tendency comes a person who's in pride will always make excuses and blame on others don't we blame it on others i did not do it my friend did it when the teacher comes and says did you do this and you did not do it do we try to prove our case i did not say it we did this i did not say it it correct yeah. yeah what does that indicate that indicates pride right because the very moment i am in pride even though god has plan for me i cannot experience that plan in my life even though god has a will for me even though god has a plan for me even though god has a purpose for me because of my own ignorance and my own pride i cannot see what god has for us if we are not able to see the plan of god working if we are not able to see the will of god working if we are not able to see what the word of god is saying working in our life it is because of our pride and our ignorance of the truth and what do i mean by the word ignorance unbelief i know the word of god but i don't believe the word of god i know it but i don't believe sorry that's not unbelief that's disbelief praise god disbelief is what i know the word of god i heard the word of god i came for the retreat i heard the word i'm studying the word but when problem comes i don't believe that word that is called disbelief 
इग्नोरेंस प्रेस गॉड थैंक यू जीसस नाउ इफ यू सी एनी सिन वी कमिट द रूट कॉज ऑफ दैट सिन इज प्राइड okay that's why if you see any sin we commit any mistake we make any blunder we make the root cause of that is pride and that's how saul made mistake out of pride david also made mistake out of pride but instead of saul repenting and I, when i say the word repenting means god kind of repentance instead of he repenting he made the excuse and blamed others Praise God. If you see Adam, Adam blamed who? Eve. 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 He never blamed Eve. He blamed, he blamed God. 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 Eve. Yeah. He blamed God. The woman that you gave. Can you put that verse? Genesis chapter three. It's in chapter three. I'm not sure which verse. Verse eleven, twelve. Here is, and the and the man said, "The woman that, whom thou gavest to be with me." So he blamed God. The woman you gave. Yes. So did he blame it on others? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what is uh, what is the nature of pride? The nature of pride is always to put it on others, to blame others. even though it was my fault i will blame it on others now if you see adam the bible says sin came to one man that is adam it never says woman it says one man that is adam so if you see sin did not come through eve but sin came through adam now he is blaming it on god and he is blaming it on eve i'm not saying he did not blame on, on eve that came second first he blamed on god now when he is blaming it on god actually if you see it was his own fault because if he would have eaten but adam would have not eaten sin would have not come but because he obeyed what eve said rather than obeying what god said that's why he experienced that sin and then who did he blame it on he blame it on god whose fault was it adam's who did he blame god and eve and then who did you blame the snake snake serpent snake yeah so don't we blame yes a is blaming on b b is blaming on c c is blaming on d d is blaming on e am i right doesn't that happen in the classroom yes yes very often very yes. often yeah Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So are you understanding? Yes. Yeah. Now, what do you mean by the word repent? You know, quit. Let them. I. What is the meaning of repent? Repent. Confessing. Confessing. No. To God. To forgiveness. Okay, repenting, not forgiveness. Repenting. I'm asking repenting. Telling God sorry. Repentance is renewing of your mind and living according to the word of God. Yeah, to repent means changing my thinking, renewing of my mind. Yeah, yes. And what do you mean by the word renewing my mind? Renewing my mind means replacing the old lower thinking with the new higher thinking. So when I repent, means I am renewing my mind. I am changing my thinking from the old way of thinking to the new way of thinking that is in line with the word. That's why if you see Jesus said when Jesus was preaching, he said this one word: "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." Why did he say repent for the kingdom of heaven? kingdom of heaven is at hand what is he saying he is saying you repent why did he say repent change your thinking because the kingdom of heaven is already at your hand you just have to repent you just have to change your thinking when you change your thinking you shall surely experience what god has for you prescott are you understanding
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Come back to James chapter four, verse six, seven, which we were seeing. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. See this. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, do you see that word, therefore? Yeah. The therefore is a continuation of the sixth verse. Now, here he is saying, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, why will he flee from you? How will he flee from you? Let me submit to God. Okay, but 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 I'm just asking in general, how will he flee from you? When we speak words. When we speak words, okay. When we speak words contradicting to the word of God. Yeah. Now I would always give this example of table tennis. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, now when you're playing table tennis, okay. Now you have the racket called the word of God, and the devil is coming. And putting thoughts, okay. And when he is coming and putting thoughts, you use that word of God. Speak out of your mouth the word of God. Now, what you're doing? You're giving. You're hitting your racket against the ball. Yes. What is the ball? The mind, the thoughts, the mindset, the wrong thinking. Now, in the same way, in the same way, when you say, when it comes to the word of God, when I submit. Myself to God means I'm using the weapons that God has given me. And what is the weapon? Hebrews 4.12. What is the sword? You know, just put that Hebrews 4.12. The God. word of God. The word of God. The word of God. I'll show you the scripture. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. You know, KJV. It's okay. Don't need amplified. Put KJV only for now. Okay. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes? Yeah. Now, if you see a two-edged sword, how many of you know what a two-edged sword is? How many of you have seen a knife? Me. I have seen a knife. Yeah. All of us. When you see the knife, have you seen one side is sharp, the other side is not sharp? Yes. The sharp side will cut, yes. no? And two-edged sword is both the sides are sharp. Yes? Both the sides are sharp. On our normal knives which we use for cooking and all, there's only one side which is sharp. But on a two-edged sword, there are two sides. That means I can whack it this way or that way, no matter which way. If it's only one side, I can only whack it this way. But when it's two-sided, I can do it this way or that way. Correct? Yes. Now, imagine how sharp is a two-edged sword. So sharp. You can do it this way, that way. How you want to use, you can use. Especially when you sharpen it very much. Press God. Then imagine the word of God sharper than that. Higher than that. So see the weapon that God has given. Now when he is coming and playing table tennis with you, when he is seeing that this battle, this match is not making you weak, but is making you strong, he will get out and he will flee from you. That's how he flees from you. And when he flees from you, he will go and search for someone else to have a match with. Because I in this match... When I'm playing, okay, against the devil, when the devil is attacking me with thoughts, I'm not supposed to be quickly tensed, quickly feared, and agree with that thought. No. The moment I receive that thought, I should take that opportunity to back, to, to speak back to that thought with the word of God and say, no devil, I'm not going to accept your thought. That should be our reaction. Is our reaction going to be full of fear when I receive the word or our reaction is going to be full of faith where we are bashing up the devil? It's like he's tying you on the chair and giving you right, left and center and you're just sitting there wonderfully daydreaming. That's how we are. That's how we are. The devil is coming this area, that area, this area, that area. What we are doing, we are just daydreaming on that, thinking on that. 
Now what you're doing? You're giving access for the devil to walk in your life. Am I right? Yes. When I give the devil access to work in my life, means I'm submitted to the devil. When I submit it to the devil, that means I resist God. And that's why, that's how we were enemies of God, because of our own wrong thinking. That's why the scripture is saying a, 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 a person with a carnal mind, a person with a, a mind full of the thoughts from the, from the world, now it's enmity against God. The moment I'm going to give access to the devil, I'm submitting to the devil. Where, where should I submit to the devil? It all starts here in our thought life. The moment I submit myself to the devil, now I'm going to be in pride. And when I'm in pride, now the devil is taking control of me and destroying my life. If we are experiencing destruction, the destruction is not coming as because God is punishing us. If there is destruction, this destruction is coming to work against us. But when I respond to that destruction with the word of God, now it will be turned around for my good. How many of you understood? Understood. I have a question. Yes. Can you repeat the child example? I did not understand that. The the child example. The, the what he example? He said the child. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes, the, you know what the devil is doing? The devil is kidnapping us here, okay? And it's like he's tying us on a chair. He's giving us, you know, he's beating us up right, left, center. And we are only daydreaming over there. We are daydreaming over there. Yes? Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so, so what, what is the definition of submission? Let me see now how many of you remember. Can I say, can I say, can I say? Last. I'll give you a chance last. I gave them on Wednesday. Submission, submission, submission. Meaning of submission. The act of getting under God's mission of God's mission or the mission of someone else. Where is God? Yeah, I know. Submission is the act of getting under someone's mission, leaving your own mission. Okay, someone is the submission. Sorry, submission is the act of getting under the mission of God or someone else. Praise God. Okay, write down. Pride. Pride. Is the root cause, pride is the root cause of every sin. Can you repeat it once again? Pride is the root cause of every sin. Pride is the root cause of every sin. Pride is the root cause of every sin. If I am, if I am, if I am going to only agree, going to only agree with what the world is saying, with what the world is saying, with what the world is saying, if I'm only going to agree to Upon what pride is the, the root cause of every sin from that. Praise God. It will come in the chat, Thomas. Praise God. So then you can copy. Praise Jesus. OK, 
okay if i am only going to agree if i am going to agree with what the world is saying now i am allowing the spirit now i am allowing the spirit of pride now i am allowing the spirit of pride the spirit of pride now i am allowing the spirit of pride to take complete control of my life to take complete control of my life the moment i receive the moment i receive god's word the moment i receive god's word and believe and believe and believe that's when i am operating that's when i am operating in humility that's when i'm operating in humility praise god no word of god no word of god no word of god leads to no humility no word of god leads to no humility because 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 if i don't believe because if i don't believe because if i don't believe the word of god because if i don't believe the word of god now now i am governed now i am governed now i am governed by the spirit of unbelief now i am governed by the spirit of unbelief now i am governed by the spirit of unbelief and unbelief and unbelief is the fruit of pride unbelief is the fruit of pride that's why we saw no uh, pride is the root cause of every sin if you see unbelief is the biggest sin that takes us to hell and that's why uh, it is a fruit of pride unbelief is a fruit of pride it is because of our own pride it is because of our own pride we don't experience we don't experience we don't experience the same life we don't experience the same life that jesus lived that jesus lived that jesus lived humility humility leads me to god's provision humility leads me to god's provision that means to unlock god's provision for me it is only through humility if i am going to be full of pride now instead of unlocking god's will god's plan for me 
Now I am living a life where I am under bondage. If you see many times we are under bondage, why are we under bondage? We are under bondage because of our own wrong thinking and our own wrong understanding of how the world works. The moment I come to realization and the moment I understand the practical working knowledge of the world, now I am no longer going to be living a life of pride, but of humility. Praise God. So how many of you understood? So pride, pride. Yes. Yeah. So isn't pride a very demonic spirit? Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't know, but how, uh, how many of you have like this, where teachers call parents into school and they tell you about how you're progressing? Yes, no, when the school exams report comes, they will tell you that. Okay, here we have, in UK, we have something called parents evening, where, in other words, parents interviews, where they will call the parents, teachers will call the parents into the school, okay? After, after school is finished, they will call and they will tell everything about how your process is going, how, how you're doing. And I always hear this word, you know, your child is, you know, passed the test, he's, you know, he improved a lot. And then what they will say to you is you have to be very proud. You have to be proud of yourself. Have you heard that word? You must be very proud of yourself. Yes. Yes. Now the world thinks pride is normal. The world thinks pride is okay. The world thinks pride is right. But is pride okay? No. Is it normal? No. It is a demonic. No. It is an evil spirit. That's what we saw in 2 Timothy 1 7. God has not given us a spirit of timidity. In other words, God has not given us a spirit of pride. So pride is not a good, you know, if we think pride is something that I'm supposed to be proud of myself. I'm supposed to be, you know, we should be very proud. It's a good thing. The world will say, I, Pride, being prideful of yourself is good. And I've heard the parents, uh, and I've heard people say this, your parents are very proud of you. Or your parents might have said this to you, I'm very proud of you. Now, is that pride, right? No, it is a demonic spirit. It is arrogance. That's an example. If, if a teacher calls the parent, calls your mother and says that you did this, this, this in the school and you, you did this naughty thing. Will you will will your mother go on the rooftop, go on the balcony and shout, uh, taking a what is that? Taking a microphone and shout, saying, My child is this, my child is that. Will she shout? No, 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 no. no. Yeah, or, or, or on the terrace, she'll go and shout. Never. Never. What she will do? She will hide it. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Not yeah. But if the same teacher calls and tells, you know, this this person, which is your neighbor, whom you hate, you know, this child is this child is this. Now will your mother go on top? Who because she hates, will she not go on the balcony and shout out loud or on the terrace and go and take the microphone and shout, he did this, she did this. Will yes. Send it to others. Yes, yes, you yes. You know what? This yes. person, you know what? This person did that. Now, is that pride or is that humility? Pride. pride. When, it pride. To, when it comes to your parent with your with with you, will will she go and show? Because of you? Yes. No, no, no. No, that means your parent will go and shout and say, "Oh, my child got very, very, very low marks in an exam." Will Will your parent go and shout? No. Oh. Because of love, because of humility. But because of pride, will you go and shout for the other neighbor did? Yes. 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 Pride. If you would be humble, you would have hid their mistake also. But because of your pride, you know, because uh, if you see a humble person, a humble person understands the love of God towards him. Shall I repeat that once again? I'll repeat that once again. A humble person understands the love of God towards him. 
the moment we come to realization of how much god loves us now a humble person will give the same love to others example the younger son now that he humbled himself and he do you think he will ever leave the father's house again now we now will you put other chill others like him down and say oh you did this or will you say yeah even i was like you in that pit but you don't have to be in that pit yeah he tells us and ah i was also in that pit but you don't have to be in that pit why because that's called humility if the word of god is saying we see in philippians 2 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 we see the scripture is saying esteem others better than yourself god is not telling you to have low self esteem god is saying what is god saying god is saying what is this thing he's saying that uh, you bring them up to your level you encourage them you speak words of life over them you speak words of grace efficient for 20 29 says speak words efficient for 29 sorry speak words of grace that will minister grace to the hearer praise god praise god hallelujah so how many of you are understanding uh, raise your hand if you understood no one raise your hand on the system if you understood praise god thank you jesus praise you jesus okay any doubts any questions praise god okay over to you nashlin aunty thank you jesus alistan i have pinged you just check uh, did you mean that Uh, yeah yes yes yeah. what i what i meant by that is uh call karo press call okay what does that mean is that uh, when i say no word of god leads to no humility means only when i receive the word of god i will be humble because what is humility god centered god dependent how can i be god dependent and god centered only when i receive the word yes yeah that's what it means because the moment i receive the word now i am humbling myself that's when i become god centered god dependent now i will be not relying on my own strength and ability but i'll be dependent on his grace praise god yeah thank you is god yeah so yeah when i typed i was also thinking yeah no word of god and no humility suddenly it got confused then i realized okay remove both the no's word of god and there is humility so it's the same so if yeah. there is word of god there is humility yeah uh, that's what i pinged him saying that word of god will always lead us to humility that's what he meant i was asking him that right i felt i felt when you know without you know when with your discussion itself i could make out what you typed <laughs> Yeah. Praise God! Praise God! Praise God! Hilda, thank you so much, Hilda, for you know being the regular in in the children's Bible study, the elder in the Bible study. Thank you. <laughs> Praise yeah. God! Praise God! All right. Now I can see Devi also. Devi, uh, I don't know today she's there. You know she's uh, with the video usually. So wonderful to see elders. All right. Okay, Alistair. so if there is no question we will wind up and uh, i think all of them are in the you know festival mode in in um, kerala also we have something called onam and bangalore something is there some food and all so all are excited so anyways all of us you know weekend mode let's pray and wind up yeah thank you lord thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you lord for guiding us in this wonderful teaching lord thank you lord for revealing to us thank you lord for giving us the revelation giving us the interpretation of your word thank you lord for loving us so much that lord even when we were sinners you gave us your grace lord and lord we make the strong decision lord to only be dependent on your grace
Lord, we, 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 we think, Lord, we have been fallen into that thinking, Lord, that, Lord, we don't qualify. But, Lord, today you have given us your grace, your ability, your strength that is helping us to qualify, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us. Thank you, Lord, for not only teaching us, but, Lord, helping us to apply that same word in our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we no longer want to be in pride, Lord. We make this decision to be humble, humble to you, humble to your word. We want to be God-dependent. We want to be God-centered. We want to be God-reliant. We want to be God-focused. God, we want you, Lord, to be the center of our life, the core of our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, Abba Father. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful yeah. teaching. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, children. Bye. See you all Thank tomorrow. You. Bye.